20th, 21st and 22nd. The MPC reviewed the domestic and global developments and their implications for the outlook. After extensive discussions, the MPC voted unanimously for a reduction in policy repo rate and for maintaining the accommodative stance of monetary policy as long as necessary to revive growth and to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 while ensuring that inflation remains within the target. On the quantum of reduction, the MPC voted with a 5 is to 1 majority to reduce the policy repo rate by 40 basis points, 40, 40 basis points from 4.4% to 4%. Consequently, the MSF rate and the bank rate now stand reduced to 4.25% and reverse repo rate stands reduced to 3.35%. Before I lay out the backdrop, the rational and expected outcomes of the MPC's decisions, I wish to thank the committee members for their valuable contribution uh, during the deliberations. I would also like to thank my colleagues in the RBI who have been working tirelessly in RBI's fight against COVID-19. My gratitude goes out to our teams for their intellectual support, analytical work and the logistical arrangements. A special word of praise for our team of what is now about 200 officers, staff and service providers who, has, who are working unstinted 24 into 7 in isolation away from their families in order to keep the essential RBI services the current uh, macroeconomic uh, situation both global and domestic. By all counts, the macroeconomic and financial conditions are austere. The global economy is inexorably headed into recession. The global manufacturing PMI contracted to an 11-year low in April 2020. The global services PMI recorded its steepest decline in the history of the index. Among advanced economies that have released GDP readings for Q1 of 2020, contractions were in the range of 3.4% to 14.2%. For emerging market economies, the growth rate ranged between 2.9% and minus 6.8%. EMEs face additional pressures in the form of capital outflows and asset price volatility from the bouts of turbulence afflicting financial markets. The plunge in crude prices has dried up budgetary revenues for oil exporters. On the other hand, oil importers have been denied terms of trade gains by the crushing blow to demand delivered by the pandemic. According to the UNCTAD, the value of global trade contracted by 3% in Q1. The volume of world trade can shrink by 13 to 32% in the current year as projected by the WTO. Global financial markets have calmed after a turbulent period in March and volatility has ebbed, but markets have generally been disconnected from the developments in the real economy. Relatively unsung, global policy response by central banks and governments has been unprecedented. Let me now turn to the domestic developments. Domestic economic activity has been impacted severely by the two months lockdown. The top six industrialized states in India that account for 60% of our industrial output are largely, they are largely in the red and orange zones. High frequency indicators point to a collapse in demand beginning in March 2020 across both urban and rural segments. Electricity and petroleum consumption, which are indicators of day-to-day -day demand, have plunged into steep declines. The double whammy of, in terms of losses of both demand and production has in turn taken its toll on fiscal revenues. Investment demand has virtually been halted by a decline of 36% in the production of capital goods in March, which was coincident with a contraction of 27% in imports of capital goods in March and 57.5% in April. This is also evident in a fall of 91% in finished steel consumption in April and 25% shrinkage in cement production during March. The biggest blow from COVID-19 has been to private consumption, which accounts for about 60% of the domestic demand. 
The production of consumer durables fell by 33% in March 2020, accompanied by a 16% decline in output of non-durables. Similar indications are reflected in surveys of the fast-moving consumer space also. In the production sectors, industrial production shrank by close to 17% in March, with manufacturing activity down by 21%. The output of core industries, which constitutes about 40% of overall industrial production, contracted by 6.5%. In conformity, the manufacturing PMI for April recorded its surpassed deterioration to 27.4, spread across all sectors. All sectors. The services PMI plunged to an all-time low of 5.4% in April 2020. Amidst this encircling gloom, agriculture and allied activities have, however, provided a beacon of hope on the, bank of, on the back of an increase of 3.7% in food grain production to a new record. A ray, a ray of hope also comes from the forecast of normal southwest monsoon by the India Meteorological Department. By 10th May 2020, up to which the latest information is available, Kharif sowing was higher by 44% compared to the last year's acreage. Rabi procurement is in full flow in respect of oil seeds, pulses, wheat, benefiting the bumper harvest. These developments will support farm incomes, improve the terms of trade facing the farm sector and strengthen food security for the country. Going forward, this would also have a salutary effect on food price pressures. The inflation outlook has become complicated by the release of partial information on the consumer price index by National Statistics Organization, obscuring a comprehensive assessment of the price situation. From the incomplete data that have been made available, food inflation, which had eased in January, uh, eased uh, from its uh, January 2020 peak for uh, next uh, two months, that is during February and March. Now suddenly they have reversed and surged to 8.6% in April as supply disruptions took their toll, immune to the ongoing demand compression. Prices of vegetables, pulses, oil seeds, milk and cereals emerged as pressure points. In the external sector, India's merchandise exports and imports suffered their worst slump in the last 30 years as COVID-19 paralyzed world production and demand. India's merchandise exports plunged by 60.3% in April, while imports contracted by 58.6%. India's foreign exchange reserves have, however, increased by 9.2 billion during uh, 2021, that is from 1st April onwards. And uh, so far, that is up to 15th of May, uh, our uh, uh, foreign exchange uh, forex reserves, they stand at 487 billion US dollars, which is equivalent to one year's imports. I now go to the outlook with regard to inflation and growth. Against this backdrop, the MPC assessed that inflation outlook is highly uncertain. The supply shock to food prices in April may show persistence over the next, next few months, depending upon the state of lockdown and the time taken to restore the supply chains after relaxation of the lockdown. Among the pressure points, the elevated level of pulses inflation is worrisome and warrants timely and swift supply side interventions, including a reappraisal of the import duties. Immediate step up of open market sales, PDS offtake by FCI to offload some part of excess stocks can also cool down cereal prices and also create room for rabi procurement. Given the current global demand supply balance, international crude oil prices, metals and industrial raw materials are likely to remain soft. This would ease input costs for domestic firms. Deficient demand may hold down pressure on core inflation, although persisting supply dislocations impart uncertainty to their near-term outlook. Much will depend on the shape of the recovery after COVID-19. 
Accordingly, the MPC is of the view that headline inflation may remain firm in the first half of 2020, but should ease in the second half, aided also by favorable base effects. By Q3 and Q4 of the current financial year, it is expected to fall, it is expected that the headline inflation will fall below the target of 4%. Thus, the MPC's forward guidance on inflation is directional rather than in terms of levels. Going forward, as and when more data are available, it should be possible to estimate the path of inflation with greater certainty. It is in the growth outlook that MPC judged the risks to be the gravest. The, the combined impact of demand compression and supply disruption will depress economic activity in the first half of the year. Assuming that economic activity gets restored in a phased manner, especially in the second half of this year, and taking into consideration favorable base effects, it is expected that the combination of fiscal, monetary and administrative measures being currently undertaken both by the government and the RBI would create conditions for a gradual revive, revival in activity in the second half of 2021. Nonetheless, downside risks to this assessment are significant and contingent upon the containment of the pandemic and quick phasing out of social distancing and lockdowns. Given all these uncertainties, GDP growth in 2021 is estimated to remain in the negative territory, with some pickup in growth impulses in H2 2021 onwards. The end May 2020 release of NSO on national income should provide greater clarity, enabling more specific projections of GDP growth in terms of both magnitude and direction. Much Anything will of depend. Three months moratorium on term loan installments. That is the first one we had announced. Two, deferment of interest for three months on working capital facilities. Three, easing of working capital financing requirements by reducing margins or reassessment of working capital cycle. Three, exemption from being classified as defaulter in supervisory reporting and reporting to credit information companies. Five, I think one, two, three, four, five, I'm just listing out, it's possible that it missed to, you know, that exemption probably was number five, Ex exemption from being classified as defaulter. I think that was four. The fifth point is extension of resolution timelines for stressed assets. And the sixth point was asset classification standstill by excluding the moratorium period of three months. So all these measures we have announced on uh, 27th of March and on April uh, uh, 17th, essentially arising from, you know, this three months time we gave uh, three months moratorium we allowed on the term loans, then on working capital we allowed certain relaxations and associated measures. In view of the extension of the lockdown and continuing disruptions on account of COVID-19, the above measures are being further extended by another three months from 1st June till 31st August, taking the total period of applicability of the measures to six months, that is from 1st March to 31st August 2020. The lending institutions are being permitted to restore the margins. You now, this is another announcement which I would like uh, to draw your attention to. The lending institutions are being permitted. I mean, not only with regard to uh, working capital, we are extending the time limit uh, by another three months, but the lending institutions are being permitted to restore the margins for working capital to their original levels by 31st March 2020. This is one area where we had given three months time now. We are now giving time uh, that the, you know, the uh, uh, margins which the reduced margins, you know, that will be restored by 31st March, which will make it easier for borrowers to sort of uh, manage their finances, manage their cash flow. <laughs>